Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to get started with the Ohio City Council special meeting, 6 p.m. Wednesday, August 26, 2015. Could I have roll call? Councilmember Clapp. Present. Councilmember Wyrick. Here. Councilmember Haney. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Blatt. Here. Mayor Lara. Here. Could uh, Councilmember Clapp, Clapp lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? Call me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today we have a number of closed sessions, including the discussion item. Uh, we, we are going to start with the closed session, but before that, we're going to go to public comment. And I do have two speakers cards. Uh, our first speaker is Bob Daddy. Uh, thank you. I wasn't uh, able to make last night's meeting, so I, I want to speak as a representative of Ohio Flow uh, to, to, to some direct questions that were unanswered by Golden State Water. Um, four and a half years ago, Ohio Flow protested uh, the fact that we did not qualify <coughs> as an urban water supplier because we did not use 3,000 acre feet of water, nor did we have 3,000 water hookups. At that time, in 2010, Golden State <clears throat> spent $65,000 to run a test that was invalid and unnecessary and not required. They're attempting to do that again now in 2005. Now, it's just a mere 25 bucks on everybody, but it's another $65,000. As a result of that protest and the result of flow following up and not letting these guys go in our general rate case, because the community needs to know where their money went, we filed against this same issue and it was interesting that a week after we got done filing somehow Golden State realized that gee we're not a urban water supplier and not only don't we have to cut back 36 percent we don't have to cut back 25 percent we just can't water more than twice. Here's the issue. I'll make it as simple as I can. If you pay $1,000 a year for water, they've already cranked up their rates anticipating the water, the RAM issue, the recapture. So what they will have done is something like, not quite exactly, but something like increase your rates 36%. So they'll increase your rates on the same usage to $1,360. If you then cut back the 36 cents percent like you're supposed to, then what will happen is you'll end up even with your $1,000, except we're exempt. So my understanding is, is that when questions were asked, they were not answered as to when are you going to readjust your water rates? How long are you going to continue to estimate? And Mr. Haney, you ask a question. What are they going to do? It's really simple. I have a 303-page document, if you like, where they filed under this general rate case that they were going to continue to ask for millions of dollars to put into the system and lose over 10% a year in water loss for 2016, 17, and 18. Interesting. With the 35% that we've cut back and the 10% that they lose for water, it, it's pretty amazing what's going to happen on this ram that they're still fighting us to recapture. We're still going to have to pay a portion of that pending the ruling. So we're not off of that. We're just not going to be penalized. What we need to know is what are they going to do about adjusting the current bills? Because we haven't heard that. Okay, Rhonda is flashing me, so I need to move this up. The purpose here tonight is to make you aware of a few items that I wish the council would consider. I know this can't be spoken about tonight. I don't want to give you all the information. I don't want to tell the bomb maker how to build the bomb. We have, by default, Golden State as our representative, our advocate with the Water Resource Board. I think that needs to be adjusted. I think Flo needs to take over that responsibility. We have an outside lawsuit that has dominoed effect from one city to another, and that's the channel keepers, and that has some wide ramifications, and regardless of what you want to do, I wish you would 
at least discuss <coughs> this thing in closed session because this is something we don't want to wish we would have done something about when we had the chance after the train went. Bob, if I can interrupt you for a second, because I'm intimately involved in the Channel Keepers lawsuit. The, uh, the judge in San Francisco uh, granted um, the Channel Island Gatekeepers a uh, motion to strike the amended cross complaint today. So, oh, today. Yeah, so everybody at the, in the cross complaint is out of the case. Right. I have a conference call with the uh, counsel for gatekeepers on Friday morning, and I'll know more about it, but the judge ruled that uh, the cross complaint was going to be stricken. Okay. I just I, wanted to make counsel aware that, you know, we need to keep our thumb on the pulse. Um, I was uh, at... Um, Casitas board meeting today and urge them to proceed as quickly as possible with the eminent domain. Um, we have by legislative act uh, the OBGMA and Golden State is a board member legislatively is my understanding as the franchisee and that is something that we'd better start on immediately because that will take a long haul. We may find that they no longer supply water for us, but yet are on the board. I, I really wouldn't want that to happen. And uh, again, the estimated billings, all we can do is we can file a complaint with the Public Utility Commission because they have been reading water meters here since 1967, and there's no reason for them to estimate the bills. People are getting enormous bills. And uh, Ryan Blatz will show up at one of the later sessions tonight where he can go into detail. Uh, I just wanted to give you a general overview. He'll be able to go into detail. And Ojai Flow, well, you know, I'm kind of reticent to say, hey, we'll do everything. But uh, right now with a couple of these, I'm not really sure who's best uh, equipped, uh, who's been involved in this, and who, who understands the process, and who has the most of the answers. So, if it is the pleasure of the council to uh, have us uh, do a few more of these other items, uh, we're certainly equipped to do that. With that, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Bob. And we will uh, be communicating with Ryan and yourself on what we decide. But I appreciate the information. Okay. Uh, a clarification maybe from Rob. I'm not sure if Rob would know, but um, is the seat on the OGBMA a chartered seat? In other words, is that seat given to a person that's the water purveyor for the city? I can answer that. Yeah, yeah. We both have read the legislation. Okay. So we can, I can, we can tell you. Go. Yeah. Well, basically, yes. Yeah, and when this, when, when the eminent domain occurs, then things will change. Well, but until no. then, they're a member of the board. Actually, that's not correct. Okay. The legislation is, is the, the, the reason that they had a default sustainability agency position is they were designated by legislation. Well, that's OBGMA, correct. Yes. And the board composition is designated by legislation. Correct. But and that is not being changed as of today. No, it, yeah, but the in board order has to, chosen to, to have the to have the board change requires a change of legislation. Correct. To petition the state legislature to change it. And so I think what Mr. Daddy is talking about is that we need to think about what we would want to try to do in terms of influencing that legislation for through uh, OBGMA. citizens. Through OBGMA. It does, yeah. No, OBGMA, it, well, it would be would a... Who, who would be petitioning the legislature to make the change? Anybody can petition the legislature. The OBGMA currently could petition. We could petition because we are also on there by... I mean, anybody can petition for how, what they want the legislature to do. Okay. That's correct, but I think that it's most most appropriate to go through the OBGMA, and if the city wants to approach this OBGMA and request, put in a request, I think that's the proper channels to do it. It would well, be better for I, the, I the wanted, us to come together. I just want to yes. make sure that I bring this back because we are in public comment. This is not an agenda but item, good. but should it, we it agenda, is. Um, should we yeah. agendize this? And, and we could talk about. I think we'll, I think we'll we be talk about it in, in closed session. session. Um, and, and I'll refer to our, our city interest. attorney to see if that's correct or but not. It is in the legislation. Okay. Or else we could bring it up in agenda. We uh, have many discussions Mr. Summers, about it, believe me. It. A portion of that conversation can be had in closed session. The ultimate decision whether to seek an amendment to legislation and how best to do so would be begun in closed session and I think would result in an open session decision 
to make a formal request of our representatives in Sacramento. That, of course, would have to be agendized for a future meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Daddy. I got second uh, speaker is Mr. Miley. And I got two speaker's cards for you. Are you intending to stay to this for the 7 o'clock City Council goes in priority, or do you want to make your comments now? Oh. Because we're going to go into closed session after your comments. Oh, I would like to make my goals comments now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Bill Miley, North Signal Street, OI. Um, I have two public comments to make. Um, in the framework of always doing better, I make the following comments. Um, I recently became an official birthday reporter for my Ojai Retired Men's Club. So I get to write up the birthday paragraphs for the guys that are having birthdays this month and next month and so on. So my comments have to do with writing. Okay? So last week when I got the second dwelling unit compliance mailer, this one, okay, I read it over, and I read it over several times. And I have some suggestions, and I understand there will be more mailers sent out before the end of the program. So I have a couple of suggestions for the next edition. Well, I have one major suggestion. And it has to do with the consequences of not complying, or the consequences of not doing anything but just keeping running your second dwelling unit, you know, it's not permitted. So I think it would be a punchline and, and necessary, and maybe that's designed for the second mailer. I don't know, because I didn't talk to anybody, anybody here. So I would suggest something like this. The last sentence reads, information provided, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, information provided to the ombudsman is confidential and will not be provided to the city or other agencies, period. End paragraph, and then it says if you have questions, call, okay? And I would suggest on the next edition, we add something like this. Either way, if your second dwelling unit does not get permitted after December 21st, the city's code enforcement officer will be directed to cite such dwellings as being in violation of the city's building <coughs> code and will be required to cease using it as a dwelling unit, period. Have a good day. No, no, <laughs> we don't put that down there. Okay. You know, this has to, it, this is really friendly. It's, it's nice and friendly, and the word encouraged is used in here, but there's no punch to it. And, you know, I'm saying, oh, these guys are really nice. They're just letting me know, but forget it, because there's no consequence. So anyway, I think I made my point. The second one is, I don't see anybody here, really. <laughs> and when I got an email yesterday that the uh, agenda for this meeting was being modified or amended, I said to myself, <coughs> what meeting? So I went to the city council agenda page, and it was 825, which was last night's meeting. So um, I don't, it was not posted as far as I was concerned. And maybe that's why we don't have a lot of people here. Because I think goals and priorities are really important, and I have a couple suggestions. So anyway, that's my second comment. So can I go on to goals? Yes. OK, great. I got three. And I think you, the council has heard these before. If I remember, the goals and priorities document that was originally crafted was in January of this year. Is that right? OK. Now, maybe it's been changed. And if I also remember, there was only one statement in there that related to affordable housing, and that was in the city manager's responsibilities. There was nothing in community development. And um, I'm pleased that there was at least something there. So I would like to see a tighter statement about afford. I would like to see work on and complete an affordable housing project this year. Put in someplace. OK? 
Okay. Um, when we had the 1105 dust up up there that went on for months, our North Signal Street group came up with some thoughts about how to prevent things like that from happening that we don't want to have happen in the future. So we had suggested to your body that a new ordinance be crafted, and I know the city council discussed that, a new ordinance be crafted requiring a permit of some sort for all walls and fences. And I remember our council member Blatch talking about maybe it could be a checklist. It doesn't have to be a formal permit with $200 or whatever, but it had to, it had to require the person to go through and find out what the city required and the city to find out what they were going to do and then build your fence. Okay. We believe that if that had been in place, the 1105 North Signal Wall would never have been built the way it was built. And this is what I know. Maybe it's not right. Okay. No names. The contractor came down to the city and asked for a permit to build a fence. That's what I heard. The city said, you don't need a permit to build a fence. Contractor went away, went back up the hill, and started to build a wall. And he built a wall with a footing, which ended up being a retaining wall, which has, requires a building permit and a zoning permit. And he built it without nothing. I mean, without anything, okay? So we got involved. I think that was like in June or July of, of last year. So we got involved, you know, and we came down here, and we talked to you guys and all that stuff, you know. And finally, after meeting a couple times with the Community Development Department, a permit was given to them in November when the wall was practically 90% finished. Okay, you got a permit. And we law and that was it. We couldn't do any more. That was it. It didn't get a zoning permit, which would have required a masonry wall to be aesthetic and covered, you know, in mason, whatever they do to make them less warehouse-like. Okay, so we, I would like that to be, be one of your possible, I would like to see the city council craft that and finally get to that so we don't have any more of this stuff. Of, oh, I didn't know I had to do that, okay. And then the last one is 1105 North Signal was 10 acres and they built it piecemeal. And you all know now that it's up for sale. Okay, so we have a big square, yellow square in the corner with a climbing wall in it, I guess. That's, that's there, okay, big yellow square. So when we were talking with the community development director, I picked up the fact that some cities have what is uh, a design review permit requirement for any residential property over about an acre. And I believe that there's like 10 or 15 of those in the city. We have them on North Signal Street on the east side of Signal. There's like 10 acres there or more. And that's all residential. So if you had a requirement that those parcels would, be, would have to go through a design review permit, we wouldn't have all this stuff going on like we had on North Signal Street. And we would never have it again, in my opinion. So... Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And I will we'll make sure to look into uh, having our meetings posted in the agenda, posted. in the agenda, in, on the agenda. It's posted right here, uh, August 26, 2015, special meeting. Uh, Rhonda, can you confirm you that it was, yesterday. Rhonda, can you confirm that it was they posted, posted yesterday? So, yeah, yeah, they were posted on the website. They were posted on the door. So, I do want to say, though, Mm -hmm. When I use this, one thing I find really, and, and this is just some real quick feedback on the website, the problem with it is that when you first go in to the, to the city website in the phone app, it has quick links and it has contact us, second unit compliance, city manager's weekly update, co compliance, Mike. community club, public oh, works, um, I'm sorry, public work records Mike. request. <laughs> but it doesn't say agendas. So people have to know to go to this little thing up here in the left hand corner. 
they have to understand that this is kind of the new methodology in websites and on, on phone applications. So I think that we should put on the quick links on the home page. It should be potentially contact us, upcoming agendas or agendas or something so that it's right there rather than people having to find it. Because this is very tiny, at least on the phone. Now, if, honestly, I don't know what it looks like on an iPad or on a computer because I always access it from my phone. There may be the same problem there, too. So that might be what happened to Bill. Maybe. Well, thank you. One more comment. Yeah, just one more comment. Then we got to move to closed session. So um, I used my iPad in my house with a Wi-Fi. And I went to the city's agenda page where the minutes are and I looked at that yesterday and I'm not blind it was not there folks from my point of view it was August 25th was the last posted meeting now maybe no no my tech the technology in my house doesn't well, we, fail we'll me. just make sure to, sure. to make uh, yeah. to to note that and highlight okay. it so and it won't I, happen in the future but we d really do need to go into closed session now that's fine so I, I, one last point to kind of make my point is there's nobody here except these other two folks three thank you thank you mr miley with that then i'm going to go into closed session conference with legal counsel uh in, in Initiative litigation, uh, number of potential cases, one. We're back from our closed session. We do have a short summary, uh, Mr. Summers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The City Council met in closed session to consider an item initiated of initiating litigation. Direction was given to staff and to council. That's it. Thank you. And at this time, I'm going to uh, change the order of our agenda. We're going to move the discussion item to, should we just do all the closed sessions or should we do just one? We're just going to do one uh, legal counsel existing litigation, Na name of case, general rate case, Golden State Water, California Public Utilities Commission, A14-07-006. And I'm going to move that ahead of the discussion item. D do I have any any comments from counsel or? No objection. No, no object. Are we going to have a brief uh, summary? We may have a report after that item. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm right now, so I'm going to... You ready? Okay, we're locked. Okay, we're coming back from closed session. Item 3, conference, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, name of case, general rate case, Golden State Water, California Public Utility Commission. Is there a report or... Um, the report out is that the council met in closed session to consider the case cited by the mayor and gave direction to staff and council. Thank you. Great. We're going to go back up to the discussion items, city council goals and priority uh, discussion, discuss city council goals and priorities and provide direction to staff. Uh, this special meeting, I requested a special meeting because I thought that it would be First of all, it's a good practice to always revisit your priorities. And I, my second thought process was that we're getting a lot of requests for different priorities. And we're running, I, I'm, we're limited with time. And I just wanted to po highlight the number of meeting dates that we have and we already have ongoing projects and I just wanted to see if if there was more priorities on certain amount of future items or ongoing projects or if we just wanted to stay with the ongoing projects uh, or if we wanted right now to draft a tentative potential um, agenda for for example September 22nd I think we already have some solid uh, discussion items in my opinion, we might have too many. Uh, October 13th, October 27th, November 10th, 
I'm assuming right now, but we, we haven't uh, formally canceled November 24th, but I'm assuming that meeting is going to be canceled. Uh, December 8th is a new, uh, I guess, appointment or a new of the, of the mayor. So that's the last meeting of the year. I don't know if we want to have anything heavy on that meet on that uh, city council agenda at night. Yeah, and then the December twenty second, three, three cancellations. Yes, because September eighth is canceled. So I, I, I guess I'm. I just want to take some some consensus from the council on what we want to put on the agenda. And if you noted, I've I've kind of made a chart of ongoing projects, uh, and I've divided them with future items, which there are thirty one. Um, ongoing projects, there's, in my opinion, 17. And, and this, this is all my doing. This isn't really consulting with, with staff. And so I'm, I'm more than happy to take feedback or change things if things are not correct. Um, there's also completed items. I decided to put that on. And I, I did a little, uh, I, 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 how do you say, I tell, uh, Italic, uh, italicized. font, italicized font on ones that I thought I just added to completed items, but they're not completed. They're but we're they're big projects, which are vacation, transient rentals, their ad hoc cultural resources, and affordable housing that I think could be put on some of this year's agenda. Um, Mayor, yeah. um, I, personally, just looking at completed items list. And if you just took leaf blower, vacation, ad hoc, and affordable, <laughs> that's plenty. That's plenty. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't. I just don't. I don't I agree. know how we could even touch the right hand side. That's plenty. And there's a couple. There's a couple of the things that you've highlighted on the right hand side that are in conjunction with these, but these are four major issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I just uh, um, with a lot of continuation in between them. Okay, so I, and, and again, if, if nothing on the right hand side, we agree to not add mm -hmm. to any of these meetings of this year. I just want to make sure that I add him the right, the correct uh, date of the council. So, for example, do we know when the ad hoc cultural resource is going to put a recommendation? Which, which agenda, which city council agenda? One thing is. It, one thing is we did direct um, staff to update the tree ordinance and Rob said it was probably going to be coming back in October. So I think that should be because the work is essentially already in progress. I think that that should be completed and particularly um, because of the, the drought situation. I think it's really important we get that done to make sure that we get standards in place to protect the trees from over pruning, which is one of the things that we we're going to do in the and, update. And then we'd also eliminate some of the language in the ordinance of what requires oh, yeah like you can't you have to mitigate it taking so out a mexican fan are, are, are you saying to add that to the add other four it, yes that because it's, it's, so we do said that, that it's almost completed yeah right. and I, I i would concur it's it's on it's in process yes. already okay. right okay well, because we, we brought it up at the beginning of the year then we just kind of tabled it and we and never revisited it and then uh, well, that was my other That's question other was one. fences and walls and, and, and hedges. The second dwelling unit. Those are three. So 20, we did, we did second units. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, these, oh, are, the, these like are the forming. Yeah, the conforming. Because it's tried yes. on so, the right-hand so side. He yeah. has 20 and 26 and 27 are update tree ordinance, fences, walls, and hedges, and second dwelling unit. Uh, those are three that I think. Yeah, we're talking about conforming on 27. It sound like we're already in and, process, and, right? and I would say yeah, the way 27 is listed is a misnomer. It's not deed restrictions. It's updating to be the conforming to be consistent with the non. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Really no, I, I put that because it came up when we were talking about deed restrictions. Oh. So I just I just put that as my personal. Okay. Well, <laughs> it I, had nothing I'll, I'll to suggest, do with it. I suggest we just eliminate that. Yeah, was that in relationship to? Yeah, just so that I can remember yeah. where yeah. that came from. So yeah, the, but I, please, I mean, please, yeah, please scratch and it the off. Planning commission is ready to roll on on looking at the conforming. So we'll just put in on. Uh, you know. We'll just put that aside, and we'll say uh, uh, planning commission. Whenever they come up, uh, come up with recommendations to the council, we'll put it on the yeah. plan. 
So some time. of these things can start at the commission level. We right. won't see them until next spring. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and some of these will start at the commission level that we have to give uh, uh, approval to. Uh, and and a perfect mean? example of it could be I, I ran into an issue the last two, three months that a lot of people were came up to me and well, said, and we have the tennis score slash indoor soccer where a lot of the soccer players were playing on tennis courts. So I I this I, I kind of threw it to to Rob saying it could the uh, Park and Recreation Commission yeah they can take, take that up. up right so we can, it, we can we, uh, assign things we're to looking, the commissions we're, I think that's great yeah we should so I, and and if it's agree it's in, if if the council agrees then we'll just refer it to the Park and Recreation Commission yeah. and see if it even needs to come to council. There's another one here, number seven on ongoing projects. That also is something that now has been direct, direct staff has been given direction on. So, oh, so, I, so actually, yeah. you trying to get a, a word in edgewise here, Rob? <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the question I have is, you know, the goal, as it was stated um, in the in the last goals round, was to focus on the high priority ones, not to enforce all vacant buildings. Right. So, if if maybe we should clarify that. Well, I, 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 I don't take it that way. I don't see that they're mutually exclusive. But so if the council wants us to enforce all vacant buildings, then I need to initiate that as well, a. Well, here, here's my point on that, okay? Uh, we are, in order to fully implement the vacant building ordinance, we need to implement a fee schedule. True. It, it, before, we, before it's even implemented. And decide whether or not we want to just leave it alone or change it that was going to be my next point is that and that's and so i guess what i'm trying to say is it, implementing the, the vacant or uh, building ordinance is a little different from whether or not we have something in place we think is enforceable right so so updating the vacant building ordinance and dealing with the fees is going to bab on the 8th yeah, and then coming right. to council on the and i would leave it at that just updated in fees. september yeah. 8th would go to bab right yeah, yeah that's we, we really haven't uh what we discussed tonight had nothing to do exactly had nothing to do with right. it so again, that's a, an assignment to BAB updating. Uh, uh, right, and, we're, and we're working on that. I we do have to keep in mind that what we did, what we directed staff to do tonight is going to take staff time, mm -hmm. well, and that's all part of the prioritization well. is making sure that we don't overload staff. So, so just, but, but the other thing is, um, in addition to having just limited number of hours, we have a limited amount of expertise. Mm -hmm. And the reason I brought to you what I brought to you tonight is to be more effective. Right. And, you know, for right. a, for right. that does take a, a reasonable amount of money, down. we can do the high priority ones. I think if, it, and I think we can update the vacant building ordinance. That's already in right. progress and happening. Right. If you want to have a broad, if you want to focus on all the other vacant buildings that are out there, that's a no. Okay. No, I think we just need to get something in place. I get agree. the update. Period. I agree. Period. Period. I think we're focused in on the properties that we need to be focused exactly. in on, mm -hmm. and well, we well, just have to update the ordinance. Exactly. I, I, you may get a different recommendation from Bab, but you well, can that's do what, that. That's, the process. Yeah. that's, that's the, process. the process. That's the process. And, and could we mark 26 and 27, for example, as assignments uh, that we're giving to the PC? Wait, could you could you repeat that again? Sorry. Uh, mark 26, fences, walls, and hedges policy, and second dwelling units conforming. Uh, as assignment we're giving to P, uh, pl Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. So I do have a comment on that. So there's a relationship between the neighborhood pl planning and the fences, walls, and hedges. And I'm really thinking that the neighborhood planning is the process that we're going to go through on the fences, walls, and hedges. Right. So I wouldn't list those as separate things right now. I'd keep them in the same Okay, package. incorporate them. But it's all uh, it's all associated with the Planning Commission. Well, we did and talk I about that before. We weren't sure if we were going to actually take that direction. It may also, it should also be routed to the Historic Preservation Commission because they have a significant concern about certain walls. So, so the I neighbor, mean, the neighborhood planning, we, we're inviting all the commissions to oh, good. Oh, BAB, okay. Planning Commission, HPC, okay. even Arts Commission and PRC. Well, how about how and, about and, tr and and that'll lay a hopefully lay a foundation upon which we can then develop whatever ordinances we want to. Okay, develop so why don't we just say that. Uh, you just leave it alone and and mm -hmm. just say that's that's part of complete streets and that process that's already in place on 26 but do assign second dwelling units conforming permits to the PC, PC to review I agree right. 
uh, on that, so the 26 already had, uh, are we still then going to be in, enforcing that ordinance if no, we're, we're going to come in? Uh, no. Because that was the direction so, last so there, night that so I direction. got. So there, was a, there was so, so there was a memo that I wrote after we had a discussion of this some time ago that talked about how we were going to enforce and it's based primarily on safety concerns. So we're, we're probably being more aggressive right now on, on hedges because we were lax earlier. But um, walls, you know, if, if things happen, we, we will, in, in the field, so, we will- but we, So we're only, of, we're only enforcing the ones that have safety implications. Right. right. Well, okay. new ones. If someone if someone starts new to build a new one in, in so improper, well, are in existing I, hedges. I, new ones and existing, existing hedges. hedges. In other yeah. words, right. The code enforcement folks are prioritizing citing existing hedges that, that present safety issues that are, that are within the traffic triangle. Any legal and, and they're issuing stop work orders on someone who starts a new wall without a permit. Yeah, that that I see. No, uh, I just want to ask a question because I want to make sure: <laughs> Is there any legal implications that the city that the city could have by enforce only s selecting a certain part of a uh, current ordinance no, versus the whole? No, we have prosecutorial or? discretion. Okay. In the code enforcement context, to cite what the code okay. the city decides right. to cite. Um, and while I have the mic, another point to note that's on the current uh, burner is the Historic Preservation Commission, per council's direction and per the commission's direction, has, is, has an ad ongoing ad hoc committee creating a procedural update to the Historic, historic Preservation Ordinance that is actually on my desk to finish that, drafting. Um, and I couldn't, oh, there it is, sorry, it's number, on number nine. nine. I was yes. trying to find it. <laughs> and that'll yeah. we expect that to also come back this fall. I'm not sure exactly. But that'll that's good. What date? That's with historic preservation. Yeah, it'll go to historic preservation commission first, yeah. and then um, to council after the historic preservation. Commission. I mean, to me, to that that right there is definitely enough that we could Funny. put on the agenda. And I, I'm a little even worried that we're not going to be able to fit it all this year. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure if this all comes come back to us. I mean, the second dwelling but, unit. But, but I think but some of the things that are delegated to the commissions and the board, it, it may come back in spring, but at least it's it's going on yeah, now. Yeah, it is it, going yeah, on. Yeah, that's certainly the case. So I, I just had a just a more of a philosophical question for the council, is we have all these future items on the list. Should we develop? just a, 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 a process, I don't know if a procedure, I don't know if it has to be written, but if if we're, if we just have this on our list and we're just gonna keep, keep bypassing or bypassing some of these items, is it worth it to have a current future list? No. Or is it just <laughs> better to start one year, scratch it all off and then if we hear from the community put it on there that year or well, or, or do we or do we evaluate or do we rank these as maybe next year's items i um, I, it, it just, I think uh, it, it, even though betsy and i don't agree on much i think maybe just scrapping and starting over except for certain uh -huh. designations is appropriate or or having <laughs> or having to council every individual council bring it up at yeah, the beginning just, of the do year it like a zero based That's budgeting certain, where you yeah. start over yeah. you know I, because i i just don't want to keep <laughs> these items on there and never it, it, it just yeah. kind of a and, yeah. no, actually as you uh, uh, again as you review these you know like I just did quickly the uh, um, ongoing projects and I just took the numbers and I tied them into associated groups on the on what we're looking at to complete in the next four months so you know three quarters of everything on the ongoing project list is already over a year mm -hmm. because they're in conjunction mm -hmm. if we did the same thing on the future items there's a lot of these future items that are in conjunction with ongoing which are in conjunction with mm -hmm. so we could do that i'm not in favor of scrapping a list only because a, a, a list is part of our memory so i could just see that that list as something is moved over to planning or moved over to BAB or moved over here or dealt with, we just erase it or you know cross it off. And then we review it as part of the review in addition. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I would discard it. Well, but, okay. You know, there's a lot of thought in it, that's all. Yeah, I just, you know, I, okay. And, and that was my struggle, I, I guess, just, with it too. I, I didn't know whether but, it, it does help. 
I mean, some of it does help. But some of it, to me, some of the items don't necessarily, in my opinion, have to do with, or I mean, it, it could in the future do with council decision. But for example, pesticides that we've heard over and over and over, I feel that could be dealt with administ- with with staff level. And 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 implement, but I don't know. I, it, well, it could be. I could I, be absolutely uh, wrong. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I tend to agree with uh, Commissioner Haney. It's a list, and that's all it is. And it's a it's a, uh, a history of items that potentially um, we may want to work on. Right. I don't look at them as a priority. I don't look at them as prioritizing. I think we're going to create our own list at the beginning of the next fiscal year, yes. they, whenever we do it. Throw away the list, but right. you, don't, you don't perseverate on the list. You just, it's there. To refer I just, I'm a list right. person, so if I see it, I do have a Sunday maybe list. So I'll put all right. those items on but, there, and then I'll look at but, him right. maybe well, once but <laughs> six but months. But we, we as a council are going to draw upon all kinds of, of things when we move issues to the to the top of the list for staff and us to work on and there's, things we don't and there's some things either. here that we may decide are important enough to do that i mean some of them are very important but they're not they're just there now they're not really meaningful to me the ongoing projects a lot like commissioner haney said a lot of these can be incorporated over here uh and some of them we're doing the enforcement of all the you know we have all the vacant buildings well yeah that's an ongoing project but right now we're working on the we, we at some point we're gonna have to rewrite the the vacant building ordinance but we're doing the new historic resources ordinance yeah we're already looking at that we're looking at at the architectural resources we're looking at an architectural resources map and then once again the building the the building uh, vacant building program so this kind of thing i think is already over in in right. this in a lot of places well, and this is just a list there for yeah. his clerk you know you, you know I'll, I'll, I'll give you just a, a quick for instance i took the ad hoc cultural resource and i threw in number two archaeological review number three um, archaeological review policy number 10 quick check process for archaeological resources number 11 update archaeological resource map number 17 cultural resources so you see that and number I, nine yeah so i took right. so i took all of those put them into the ad hoc committee because we're already meeting and there's no reason that we shouldn't well, in that in that this is what i was trying to get at let's at least edit and revise right okay just along those lines and also we don't need two declines you know uh in the future items list uh and uh 2013 building code i mean you know that's that's sort of i mean some of these things like th- develop fence standards for arbolata that's part of complete streets the same spirit that right. you're talking about right. why don't we get why don't we each of us look at this thing for some suggested as it edits and consolidation okay yeah Okay. And, and, the, and, the, and I agree. And and th- this is my struggle since the beginning of the year. I have to admit because some of these do overlap, and and, and we have to be conscious about that because that's we, we do want them to overlap because we want the consistency of that issue. I, to go, I, I, and I also think that we need to be able to uh, address the ones that we want to give to commissions and then get some input back on uh, you know mm-hmm. should those commissions be looking at those items because a lot of this we can give to uh, to the commissions that's what they're there for right um the only thing that i don't see on any of this list is anything with the community development there's nothing on here regarding that and that's our that's all of us um have assessed that's our weak link right now in in uh, so in our community well if you look at this future item number eight Eight information handouts for mm-hmm. right. there's things like that in there yeah yeah and, and actually we are landscaping there, guidelines there's, so there's, that's an ongoing thing there's a I number of things on the, there's a number of things on the futures list that mm-hmm. we're actually will come forward <laughs> during the next six months but we are working on the um, planning application the other the other thing that I think that we haven't been paying particular attention to is how do we get the Native American resources uh, historic resources um married to our historic resources or our historic preservation commission right. mm-hmm. and are they 
are they really the same? I mean, the Historic Preservation Commission looks at historic buildings and landmarking and things like that. But really, with with uh, with the legislature, AP 52, it really is a historic resource. And somehow we've got to get our our Historic Preservation Commission right. involved in that. But I don't know whether there's going to be any pushback from the commission on that or not. I mean, they really don't look at it as that as that being part of their responsibility. Yeah. Even though the Title IV is titled Historical and Cultural right. Resources. Right. So right. I, I do have a suggestion on that. I, th I think that um, the egg hasn't quite hatched. You know, we've, we've got the ad hoc committee, and we've also got consultations going on now. And I think we're going to learn a lot through that process, and that we may get to a point where um, it makes sense to bring that issue up yeah. right. after, the other, yeah. after that gets right. a little further. And, and, the and other I agree. I was going to mention that, too. And the other thing is, is that the way that we have a liaison from the museum on that commission, we may want to have a liaison initially from the tribe. Um, I think that would be the That's way to do it. Call. And then if we have a vacancy, we can think about appointing somebody from the tribe onto the commission itself. But I think we ought to really think now about bringing, you know, some representative of the tribe as a liaison. Maybe we should bring that idea to yeah, I mean, I think that's something the ad hoc committee yeah, yeah. should be I, talking I think about. That's a great idea. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that's that. Yeah. the other point I I'd note is that I would expect that the outcome of the ongoing still hatching ad hoc committee will likely be some kind of a, a document that I expect we will take to the planning commission and the historic preservation commission, mm -hmm. ensuring that we get their uh, voice and and um, right. connect them back into the loop. Right. Absolutely. I I did. I mean, the, the, uh, the more we talk about the needs in our community, the more ideas pop up. Uh, but, but do we need, a, I guess, uh, as, as lear going through this process, I'm, I'm learning and I'm trying to figure out a, a, in my head a, a system. And, and uh, I've been wanting to work with, obviously, my colleagues in reviewing these issues because I think that that's the only way we could get anything done is having the majority consensus on any of these items. So. Uh, I, I guess in the future I, I will have to or I, I'll be in support of finding ways to add to these future items and see how we could um, get them done without overwhelming our staff because we are limited but we do have other tools and other organizations that we that we could uh, work with and with that maybe with that said there was another idea that I had in terms of making us aware of all the other organizations that we're part of and having basically maybe a, a, a one sentence or two sentence verbal sharing of what we've learned or what's going on with the special with a certain organizations that we're a liaison to for example um, the sanitary district yeah. came up y l last night. The WADA OBGMA is a hot issue. Yeah, we would, we would, we would, we would welcome any reports from that liaison or that um, voting delegate on that agency. Uh, I know that I'm part of a policy committee for SCAG. Uh, we have the animal um, meeting. So th 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 these are all ideas. I mean, I, I think that. Uh, we could utilize in the future. I know we're dealing with a lot right now, uh, but I, I guess just finding solutions. So, and with well, that, I, I I think that any other for uh, any few more comments. I mean, I, we have already a good amount of items that we've agreed on that we could put on our uh, future agenda. Um, well, the other thing is, is I think these that have already been implemented, I need to just take them off here. Yeah. No, and these were just showing a, a complete items right. status, and I kind of mixed ongoing projects on here because uh -huh. I wanted to add the status of it. So I just wanted to also acknowledge of complete items just to keep them alive and just to m make sure that we we know that they're being implemented. Just kind of a yeah. a mindset thing for a council mm -hmm. to to acknowledge. But the way that I look at it is that once we've done something, 
why do we need to look at it again? Mm -hmm. It just seems like when you look at this list, if it started at the leaf blower, these are the things that are important for us to be paying attention yeah, to. Right. Well, and we, these above yeah. this, other than, you know, there's a little bit the updated second non-compliant units guideline. There's still some more work to do. But other than that, everything above there has really been done. And, you know. Okay, so I see what you're saying. What I mean? uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that, I mean, it's a good point. Definitely. I, I, I agree with you because leaf blowers isn't fully completed. Right. Yeah, I agree. And then I think uh, what uh, Councilman Wyrick said is we kind of go through this and take what we think that belongs over here like right. Councilman Haney did. And then I think we've probably got a pretty good list that's going to take us well into the next six months, if not longer. So in three months, I'm pass passing it to the next mayor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, with that, then I guess we'll we'll move on to the next item, unless anybody else has any further comments. If not, then I appreciate your input and your feedback. Uh, it, it just it, it makes me feel good that we're all I, agreeing uh, on on. It, on priorities uh, um, mr. mayor I just want to compliment the mayor for focusing the council's attention on these these projects and priorities and objectives that we've had because I think uh, as we as we experience it's so easy to get caught up in the moment of things and saying all right we're gonna do this now and it's like a, a bouncing ball sometimes and I think that the the way that the mayor's kept us focused on certain projects this year has been very helpful to the council, even though we still have a little bit of, of the, you know, emergency feeling on certain things. But all in all, we've pretty much kept in line with, with the projects that we outlined at the beginning of the year. And uh, I just want to thank you for kind of thank focusing you. in on us. And yeah. Mr. Mayor, real quickly, just to update you guys, uh, Bill and I have scheduled a meeting for the 31st of August with the focus Monday. group for the vacation rentals. And then after that uh, meeting, we will be coming back with the recommendations from the focus group. So that's moving forward. We feel the urgency. And Great. it's one of the things that I think he and I will. Well, that's something we agree on. I just, uh, Mayor. <laughs> yeah. Urgency. Mayor the, for the, yeah, Council Member Haney. The, uh, the, the, you know, with anything, uh, um, for me, if I don't have a date, I just have a tendency to put it back in the pile. So why don't we all agree on when we want to give these back to you? Can we have them back to, uh, to Mayor Savaro in two weeks? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All of us? Okay. And put dates on, what do you mean? No, just give you our modified list. Our edits oh, okay. and oh, our great. priorities. Our edits. Yeah, thank you. In turn, you. can put two it weeks. on your Excel yeah. and go for it. I edit okay. some suggestions to you in two weeks. Great. Thanks. Okay. I appreciate it. I Good would idea. appreciate that. Thank you. Well, with that, I'm going to go to item number four, which is a closed session uh, conference with legal counsel, initiate of litigation, number of potential cases, too. Should I just announce a, the, the fifth? Uh, close item is the performance evaluation city manager and uh, any reports on either or no I don't think so I okay. don't expect to report on either item great thank you right. <sighs> <sighs> have to be in Huntington Beach today